The very first video on this channel was an overview of faster than light travel methods. Yes, we missed two of them, but that's what the future's for. Today, we're gonna take a deep dive into one particular method of faster than light travel, the warp drive, which, believe it or not, has real theoretical research put into it. If you're world building a science fiction universe and you want realistic faster than light travel, or if you're just curious about the state of real world peer reviewed research into warp drive, then this video is for you. Almost 30 years ago, Miguel Alcubierre brought the warp drive out of the realm of science fiction and into the realm of science theory. He looked at the equations for general relativity, Einstein's theory of space-time and gravity, and said, hmm, I bet I can write down numbers so that this theory allows a ship to go faster than light. And he did. The solution he came up with was to suppose the space in front of the ship would contract, and the space behind the ship would expand. This meant a ship could be carried across the galaxy in a bubble of space-time going faster than light, while the ship itself technically didn't move at all. This is important. The ship is not moving faster than light. It's moving with the same speed it had before the warp drive engaged. Let's call this ship speed. The warp bubble is what's moving faster than light. So we'll call it bubble speed. Remember that for later. So if it's been figured out, where are the warp drives? Why aren't we chillaxing on a beach in the permanently twilight terminator of Proxima Centauri B? Well, there are a bunch of problems. Some of which have been whittled down, but others which may be physically impossible to solve. For instance, in order to create a warp bubble, you need negative energy. Some people point to E equals mc squared and say this means we need negative mass. But these people forget that E equals mc squared is an approximation of the relativistic energy equation, which has mass as squared under a square root. This means the mass doesn't have to be negative. It has to be imaginary. Negative energy, negative mass, and imaginary mass are all grouped together and called exotic matter. And we know of nothing in physics, theory, or experiment that can give us exotic matter. Except for some very special cases in quantum physics, but that's so small it's almost not worth bringing up, and it's debatable whether it actually counts as negative energy at all. But even if we had exotic matter, there would be the problem of just how much we need. In order to make just one trip, the original model of the warp drive would need more exotic matter than there is positive mass in the entire universe. Luckily, there are ways to reduce it to more reasonable levels. One way is to oscillate the position of the exotic matter around the ship. Another is to realize that since we're warping space, we can pull a TARDIS and make it bigger on the inside. Turns out, the smaller the surface area of the warp bubble and the larger the volume, the less exotic matter we need. Using these techniques, we can reduce the amount to something you can hold in your hand, or maybe even less. And you might wonder if we can finagle with the numbers enough to find a way to do it without exotic matter at all. Sadly, in 2001, a paper came out that proved mathematically that any faster than light warp geometry in general relativity requires exotic matter. Speaking of warp geometries, I want to give an honorable mention to the Kroshnikov tube, which is a corridor in space that is shorter if you go through it than if you go around it. This is different from a wormhole because a Kroshnikov tube has sides, whereas a wormhole doesn't. Next, in the warp drive, there are event horizon problems. An event horizon is an intangible boundary where you can only go one way. Come at it from one side, you can go through it just fine. Come at it from the other side, and no matter how much energy you expend or how fast you go, you will never get through it. Not even light can get through it. The type of event horizon most people know about is the point of no return when you get close to a black hole. But there are other types of event horizons, such as the front and back of a bubble of space that is going faster than light. If we toss something out the back of the ship, it will exit the bubble no problem, and it will end up in regular space going about ship speed. But something behind the bubble trying to catch up can never reach it, because the bubble itself is going faster than light. Even if you shine a light beam after the warp bubble, 
it will never catch up. Thus, the back of the warp bubble is an event horizon. Now we think of the front. If the bubble runs into something, then that thing will end up inside the bubble. But something inside the bubble cannot exit the front because if it did, then it would have to be traveling faster than light through normal space, which is impossible. So anything at the front of the bubble just kind of gets stuck there, making the front of a warp bubble another event horizon. There are three major problems with this, one of which has been solved. And that one is, how do you get the warp bubble to stop if no information can reach the front of the warp bubble because it's an event horizon? And the answer is cool and clever. You send little tiny mini warp bubbles from your ship because those little tiny mini warp bubbles can go faster than light and thus pass through event horizons. The second problem is that event horizons have Hawking radiation, which is light that comes from them because of quantum physics. Black holes Hawking radiation is so weak that for most purposes it practically doesn't exist. On the other hand, inside a warp bubble, it's almost as hot as the Big Bang. The third problem is that space is not empty. It's got dust and light and cosmic rays and all kinds of stuff. And anything the warp bubble runs into, it scoops up. Anything going less than ship speed or in the opposite direction will hit the ship. That's not that much of a problem because the ship would have to weather all that anyway. However, anything traveling greater than ship speed, including light traveling in the same direction as the ship, collects at the front event horizon because it's trying to get out of the bubble, but it can't because if it did, then it'd be going faster than light. So it's just stuck there. What this means is that when the ship reaches its destination and shuts the warp drive off, then all that built up matter and energy is going to be blasted out with the power of a Death Star. Yeah, we might want to think that one over before we start building them. Another factoid of note is that warp drives, like any method of faster than light travel, allows backward time travel. I've explained how FTL allows time travel boringly in this video, and more interestingly in this video. But if you're too busy to watch those, here's the 10 second rundown. Vertical is time, horizontal is space, diagonal is light. We take our warp drive faster than light from red to blue. Bam. Change our ship speed. Engage warp drive back to red. Bam. Get home before we left. And that's how you do it. Do not despair, for all the issues discussed in this video go away when we think about slower than light only warp drives. They don't require exotic matter, they don't have event horizons, and they don't allow backwards time travel. In fact, according to a paper that came out just a month ago, slower than light warp drives may be achievable with only known science. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing that they can't go faster than light, but hey, it's warp drive. Now the question on many of your minds might be, how do we go from where we are now to having a working faster than light warp drive? How long? until we can chillax on that beach on the permanently twilight terminator of Proxima Centauri B. First try. Well, at the very minimum, one of two things needs to happen. One, we find or create large amounts of exotic matter. Two, we discover a theory of space-time that allows for faster than light warp drives without exotic matter and beats out general relativity at theoretical and experimental predictions. Either way, we'll need a breakthrough in fundamental theory. Ultimately, whether or not faster than light warp drives are possible is up to the objective laws of physics. If you want to dig deeper for yourself, you can check out the big old list of references in the description. Till next time, thanks for watching.